After one year of the, from the start of the Russian invasion in Ukraine, uh, with all the changes that happen in the international arena, there are some elements that emerged uh, pretty clearly, uh, even though maybe they, they might have surprised us or they ran contrary to the initial predictions of, of some of the experts. Uh, first is the central role that the United States still have uh, in coordinating and gathering support uh, for, uh, for the Ukrainian effort. Uh, so, uh, as it's, it was testified also by the, the, the surprise visit of President Biden in, uh, in Kyiv, uh, the United States have pledged their unwavering support uh, to democracy in Ukraine, to their territorial integrity, uh, and uh, to their sovereignty. And, and so, uh, clearly the United States are still the, the central pillar of, of the Western countries. Uh, the second element is that even in the face of some initial uh, doubts or st some small uh, doubts about the magnitude of, of the support towards, U towards Ukraine, the European countries, the countries of the European democracies reacted pretty promptly and in a pretty coordinated way. And maybe that might have uh, surprised us uh, and, and ran contrary to initial expectations. And the third element might be the fact that um, the Russian invasion is, uh, is progressing pretty slowly with many setbacks. Uh, and many at the beginning believed that uh, the Russians would, uh, would, uh, would manage to conquer a lot more territory than they actually did uh, after one year of the invasion. So this is a pretty clear signal of their military weakness. Uh, but even though these three elements uh, maybe emerged pretty clearly, there are still some doubts about future scenarios and how we can expect this conflict to, to end. Uh, so on the one hand, uh, if, if we were to believe the pledge to the territorial integrity of, of Ukraine, um, you know, clearly Ukraine is going to need more help uh, from a military and also not military point of view. And so the question is, for how long can we expect public opinion in, in Western democracies to keep supporting this effort towards Ukraine? And at what point uh, citizens are going to be, that's enough, no more weapons and no more, um, no more help uh, uh, sent the Ukrainian way. And on the other hand, uh, if instead we're looking at a mediated peace, a uh, um, uh, negotiated agreement, uh, the doubt is still about the credibility of any uh, Russian commitments. Uh, they might commit to some limited territorial gain, but then what can assure us, and the Ukrainian people especially, uh, that in 5, 10, 12, 15 years from now, uh, they're not going to come knocking uh, at the Ukrainian door for more, or start again uh, uh, an invasion and a violation of the territorial integrity of Ukraine. Uh, and so uh, these doubts are still out there and, and they make any prediction about how this conflict might end and how long-lasting peace can be uh, very hard.